Hello, good evening and welcome to The Majority Show. This is the final show of the year. We normally broadcast at 7pm every Wednesday. Uh, I'm your host, Mark Devlin, and this is Scotland's number one anti-national show. Going out live on Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. I'm here with co-host Mary Devlin and... Um, normally David would be with us, but he's already celebrating Christmas, so we're very happy to give a big welcome back to Niall Fraser. Hello everyone, it's great to be back. Hello, good evening everyone. And, um, okay, so this is the last show of 2022, another year of, oh no, it's your, sorry, that's, um, <laughs> that's your bit, uh, Niall. Uh, so tonight we're going to be taking a look back at uh, what happened uh, in 2022. What are, the sub- what are some of the things that we're going to be looking at? Oh, you know what we're looking at, Mark. We'll be reliving the madness of 2022, another year of dysfunctional SMP meltdowns. Fantastic. And I'm really looking forward to looking back over the year, and I think you'll see that some of the themes that we started with at the start of the year, that we've been talking about these things all the year. Oh, well, that's a little bit sad, perhaps. But one of the question, big questions, of course, is going to be, is there any progress? Uh, before all that, I'm going to be talking with Anne-Marie Ward from Favour UK, the addiction recovery charity, talking about her issues with the Scottish Government. And of course, stay tuned because you won't want to miss it. It's Summer of the Year, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's a big one. Okay, so we will be back very shortly. Right, welcome back to the show. As you know, um, or maybe you might know, maybe you may not know, we are uh, doing a new fundraising drive for 2023. Our target is to get 200 people to pledge five or ten pounds a month so that we can amplify your voice through 2023. As you know, and we'll actually we'll talk a little bit about some of this during the show. We've been doing all kinds of things this year, billboard campaigns, writing articles, tons of memes and social media. And we have a weekly think tank meeting in Glasgow as well. Well, we work pretty much full time on the majority. So if you can please pledge a monthly or one time donation at our website, everything helps. Even five pounds a month really builds up. It really helps. Uh, Yeah, that's true. Five pound a month really does build up. But you know what's better than a donation? A resign sturgeon mug. Uh, Perfect present for Christmas this year. If you haven't got one already, get one bought, guys. Yes, it's perfect for anyone you love and, of course, the nationalists you love to hate. So, trigger people in the workplace, that's the mug to do it with. That is the big one, definitely. (laughs) And please remember to subscribe on YouTube for alerts because once we get to 1,000 subscribers, we'll get a lot more exposure on YouTube's algorithm. We're nearly at 700, so please... Either you yourself or get your friends, your family, everyone to subscribe over the holidays. Okay, and a big thank you, of course, as always, to our friends at UK Union Voice United Against Separation for supporting the show throughout the year by letting us broadcast directly to their Facebook pages where many of you are watching right now. And wherever you are, please like, share or comment. Tell your friends. Extend our reach at the click of a button. And as usual, if... I will be doing the comments tonight, so please keep them short, and I'll try to get as many up as I possibly can. Thanks. Right. Um, you know, coming up, we're going to be talking about the, what's going on in the year, but uh, um, and then also I'm going to be talking to Anne-Marie Ward of Favour UK. So we'll be back in just a second. Right. Uh, well, this afternoon I was able to talk with Anne Marie uh, f- uh, from from Favour UK. It's a charity that aids uh, drug recovery, uh, not aids recovery from drug addiction. And I, I was selected about five minutes from her chat and uh, posting a longer version uh, over the next few days. But for now, uh, here is the five minute version. 
Right. Okay. So here we have uh, on the line uh, with me now is uh, Anne Marie Ward, who is from the Favour uh, UK charity. And um, Anne Marie's been in the news a little bit lately uh, for various reasons. So, uh, first of all, I guess best thing to do is to tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Well, my name is Anne Marie Ward, and I'm a person in long term recovery. For me, that means that I haven't used alcohol or other drugs for over 25 years, which is quite an extreme way to live. I like to think of it as being both radical and revolutionary, um, especially in today's world. Right. And you, 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 you got in, involved in this charity. When, when did you? When did you first start get involved in it? Sorry. Okay, so we had our first UK recovery walk in 2009. Uh, we originally constituted as a community group, then a community interest company, and we became a charity almost 10 years ago now. Um, we'll celebrate our 10th year as a charity in April 2023. And the idea behind the charity was, first, first and foremost, to make recovery visible because we did it in a time where it wasn't. Um, yeah. And we, we've more or less succeeded in doing that um, but the second reason why we set up was to become a professional and a public education movement around addiction and around recovery and I think we're only really starting to make headway on that aim. Right okay so you've been in the news a little bit recently um, I actually first saw you when you were complaining about the Scottish government not giving you support and a video that was quite widely publicised all around social media. Uh, recently, you were on on um, news because you ejected a, a Glasgow councillor from one of your meetings. Could you explain for uh, first first explain maybe about the meeting, and then talk a little bit more about the Scottish government and what your issues have, have been with them so far? Yes, yeah, sure. I mean, ultimately, you know, the Scottish government in itself has. And Nicola Sturgeon's own words took their eye off the ball when it comes to the the drug death and alcohol death crisis, the addiction crisis that we currently see in Scotland. And it's in such crisis that with exactly the same laws as what we have in England and Wales and Ireland and um, across Europe, in fact, we have five times more deaths than our nearest neighbour. Um, so that tells us that it's not our laws that need change, which is often the mantra that the Scottish government take, that if only Westminster would allow them to have drug consumption rooms, then we wouldn't have five times more deaths, which has became a, a major mantra of Scottish government in recent years. Um, and it's again, absolute, well, it's a political red herring because in England they don't have uh, drug consumption rooms. You know, as I said, we've got exactly the same laws, but what it is we do need to change in Scotland is our treatment system. Our treatment system is very different to the English treatment system. So okay. quite often we are advocating for, and that doesn't go down well when you're trying to, you know, and from the Scottish government's side of things, they're trying to fuel proxy debates on independence. So if, Someone like me, who is an independent supporter and who's also a member of the SNP, comes in and says we need to look at the English system. Or, you know, if I'm being more politically astute, I say we have to look at the third sector system because even saying we need to look at the English system can be seen as, you know, somehow promoting Tory ideals or promoting uh, English ideals, you know, which is an utter nonsense. It's just in the third sector where the majority of the provision is delivered in alcohol and drug services in England, um, they have five times less deaths. So can we please look at what's going on there, what they're doing differently, and could we maybe start to apply some of the practice that is in that area where they have five times less deaths? Could we start to maybe think about doing some of that in Scotland? And you'd think that that would be an easy conversation to have, but because of the political climate, it's it's a toxic conversation. Well, it's I mean, it's a terrible situation, really, because, you know, so many people are dying and perhaps I guess you think many of them are dying unnecessarily. Right. So um, so uh, we can only hope that you and people like yourself can can get their voice heard a bit more. Um, 
and improve the situation all around. So I'd like to thank you for talking with me today. And um, we'll hopefully talk to you again sometime in the future. And good luck and best wishes for your, your journey in trying to improve the lives of people in recovery. Thanks. Yeah, it was a, a very interesting conversation. It went on a bit longer than that, of course. And as I said, I'll post the entire version um, there. But I think it's quite interesting when we have people who are actually SNP supporters and then they're having so much trouble with the the Scottish government itself because of the independence issue. I mean, she basically says that there. She says because the government is so focused on, on independence, they, they can't even say... Um, uh, well, you know, England has got better results than us. And they go, well, what, you know, what, what are you then, a Tory? That's basically what she's saying, right? So I think that's a very way that uh, Scottish nationalism has toxified the debate around uh, many different topics. I don't know if you can say about that, guys. Um, did, uh, Niall, you've been involved in drug recovery and so on. His, oh, wait a minute. His, Niall, his, we've right? lost your sound. We've lost your sound. Okay, just hold on. Let's put Niall on. Right. Okay. We'll get. We'll, we'll come back in a second with it. Mark, can you hear me? Yeah. One? Yes, I think so. We could be. Of course, you're on. You're on ours. Sorry, guys. My sound. Oh, bad. right. Okay. There right. you go. Okay. So, um, okay. of course, um, <laughs> I mean, it's so toxic. I love the comments. Uh, Alan Jack saying it perfectly. It's or Rita Johnson. Sorry, it's chalk. The toxic duty sturgeon. We can't even talk about the drug devs without independence getting dragged into the equation. Mm -hmm. It's it's so polluted at this point. It's unbelievable. And uh, full credit to Anne Marie Ward uh, in kicking this um, Graham Campbell. It was this is this Rastafarian SMP councillor that shows up to uh, uh, drug addiction talks dressed as a Rastafarian. I mean, the guy, it's well, he just turned just up just to get the photo opportunity, right? yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, she right, rightly threw him out, so good on, good on her, good on more power to Anne Marie and a great interview, Mark. Yeah, well, as I said, there's more of, more of it there, and um, uh, we'll have that out there. I mean, I think it's really, as I say, really interesting to see people um, who are struggling with these type of things. And I mentioned before that I was on this uh, undercurrent discussion, and there was a lot of the same type of discussion as well. It's like yeah. how the, the, the Scottish government likes to put in all these layers of their own people and these all these quangos to deal with the drug crisis and so on, and they just ignore all the people who are actually yeah. working you, you, on you, the ground. You can't actually talk about the drug deaths in a vacuum without it being overpowered by the independence debate. It's just yeah, unbelievable. It's a it's... terrible shame. Right. Okay. Um, so it was great. Thank you very much, Anne Marie, for uh, coming on on the show. We uh, will be back in a second where we will be talking about the year this year. Mm. What an amazing year was it? Was it yes. good for you? Full of war. <laughs> <laughs> Right, um, as 2022 draws to a close, we can all say, what was that all about? So we had three prime ministers for a start and the death of the Queen. Um, um, may she rest in peace. And a uh, shocking, or well, maybe not shocking, but uh, stunning uh, Supreme Court decision. But before we start, how was 2002 for you? Did anything special 2022. happen? 2022. 2020, I always do that. <laughs> Oh, no. Most of us don't yeah. remember 2002. Yes, well, that was quite a long yeah. time ago. Uh, how was 2022 for you? Did anything special happen to you th you this year? Uh, please share in the chat. Um, and maybe we'll select the best ones. And maybe we can see a little bit, you know, and it's not just about politics, it's about a community of people we have here. So let's see what we've got. Now, what happened in January? All right. Yeah. So in January, we started with the lockdown was still on. Um, Thanks, Rita, forget. for that. Who, who can forget? Well. So lockdown was still on. Restrictions were lifted on January 17, which, which was much later than the rest of the UK. And, you know, this uh, is still rolling on. Um, we heard from Matt Hancock's diaries just the other day that Sturgeon, because of Sturgeon, um, because they didn't want to fight with Sturgeon, they basically applied unscientific advice to mask children all across the UK, which is quite shocking. And I don't know, I mean, really, does that lack grounds for uh, a, a court case or some kind of legal action? I, I don't know. I'm not too sure about that. Now, I mean, you're plenty, plenty to say. Yeah, on that. always plenty to say. I mean, it's uh, this, is, this is a classic sturgeon tactic, is to differentiate ourselves from 
the the UK government. And of course, uh, during the COVID, it was a uh, an all you could differentiate yourself from. I mean, every uh, every action the UK took, she took almost the opposite reaction: too safe, too um, overprotective. And yet, at the same time, we still seen all the um, all the COVID positive patients shuffled into care homes. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it seems like a discombobulated approach, absolutely from the get go. And Sturgeon just desperate, absolutely desperate uh, to differentiate herself from the UK government. That's it. Simple as. It was, yeah, it's really terrible, all that grandstanding that went on uh, during the COVID pandemic itself. And you find out later that the results aren't any better, in fact, in many cases worse. And we're just being reminded by Alan Jack that she wanted to cut two <laughs> inches off the school doors for ventilation. Yes. Yeah, that should have been so nice, as I've always... I don't actually remember when the kids had to stop wearing masks. I think it went on for months and months. Yeah, yeah. really, um, really sure. I mean, imagine that. Now you find out that it's, it was completely unscientific. Okay, another big thing that happened in uh, January was the Scots Tories decided to stick the knife into Boris. Not only to stick the knife in, but Douglas Ross was up there at the front of the queue handing them yeah. out. Yeah. And uh, at that time, I think we and we were. Uh, well, my feet thing. Well, it's just about to say it's me that I, I'm not a big. I'm a believer in loyalty, and I think it's very difficult for a voter to vote for someone who is being disloyal to someone else mm -hmm. because they're like, well, why should I be loyal to you if you're not loyal to them? And I think there was many ways in which Douglas Ross could have dealt with this. He could have done it quietly. He could have, yeah, but he could have, you know, he could have formed a group and he could talk things all behind the scenes and what so, so on. But he was right up there, right first uh, in the front of the queue. Mm -hmm. And we didn't, I, well, I didn't like it. I didn't think it was right. Um, and then, of course, there was a the flip-flopping. I was always flip-flopping. Well, I'll be talking about him a little bit later mm -hmm. on. Right, um, yeah. and And how, and what happened there. But this was the beginning of it. Right. Yes. Back in okay. back in January, Actually, this I, is when I, I it all started. Um, review to Mark. I think he was right to uh, to to call for his resign resignation at the time. But then again, it's a, a week later, or somebody flip flopped on it, Mark. Just like, right, you're, yeah, of you're, course. You're reminding so he, us. So, so, made, made every, so he made everyone hate him uh, yes. in that case. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think now there's, of course, people are saying after all the tumult, I suppose, of the past um, year, you know, there's, I don't know if people, so many people are now saying, you know, they want Boris back. But it seemed that the party went through a lot of unnecessary, uh, perhaps unnecessary, um, what's the word? Self, something immolation or self, you know, self, some yeah. word like that. Flagellation. Self flagellation, flagellation, that type of thing. Self immolation sounds, sounds a bit though. kinky, but um, <laughs> right. all right. Yeah. So, anyway, okay, finally for January, uh, we highlighted student indoctrination at St Andrews University, which is an ongoing theme for the majority because we. Uh, we, that was exactly the same time as we started our youth indoctrination fund, not for us to indoctrinate folk, but for us to stop uh, to stop that. Stop happen. other people mm -hmm. doing it. Yes, exactly. Yes. And we were being quite successful through the year. We um, we kind of sponsored uh, some some students and so on. So that was very good. And thank you for mm -hmm. everyone who donated to that project. Yep. Moving on. Right, moving swiftly on to February. Okay, this is when we uh special agent Alan Smith was uh at Her Majesty's Secret Service was called into action, guys, to uh to save Ukraine and the plight of Ukraine, guys. Alan Smith, can you believe this, guys? Well, the how temerity. did you get how did you get on with that? Um, well, I think the conflict is still rumbling on, Mary. Uh, I don't know if he's got any um if there's any um you know, repercussions of what Alan Smith has maybe put in place. Uh, who knows? Uh, maybe he's going to go back across and sort the situation. We don't know. But um, he's certainly given the guys a good talking to. So this, I mean, it's just another um, sort of uh, jolly uh, for the SNP members to, to jet set around the world in their internationalist sort of stage, uh, spending our money uh, uh, whilst not even giving a... a a care in the world, a, a jaw about Scotland, you know. Uh, what's in reality? What is Alan Smith going to do with the Ukraine guys? Nothing, 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 nothing. So, why is he there in the first place? Anyway, it's moving a, swiftly on. A, that was <laughs> 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 it's um, just a uh, um, yeah. So we've got um, yes, a doctor no got a clue, uh, Mister Smith. Um, so 
Uh, what else happened in February? We had a show with the majority with Brian Monteith, and this is when the rumblings of is Sturgeon done started to happen. You know, and we're like, is this it? Is this a cracks happening? Well, this was February, guys, and we're still with her. So mm-hmm. clearly, it was just wishful thinking in hindsight. But yeah, I think we thought today, that thought that she would, you know, maybe get mm-hmm. go by March or something like that. Hopefully, next March might be yeah. might be better. But you know, who knows? These these type of leaders always have the the unfortunate yeah. tendency of hanging on by their fingernails <laughs> until they're pulled out of office. But the, you know, rumblings in the SNP in these past few weeks have you know shown that perhaps that she yes, may well um, be another a little bit further on the way out. Well, I mean, we fast forward to today, and it is right. She's sort of teetering on the edge. Will she go? Will she won't? Uh, will she won't she? Uh, this is a sort of uh, feeling in the SNP now. But um, I was talking to a colleague earlier on, and SNP the only thing they have, guys, the only thing is Nicola Sturgeon. That's it. Mm. Nothing else. Uh, so if she's gone, so does the party. So I can't see her ever departing, guys. I think she's well, going to go down with the ship. <laughs> you know, the ship may be going down. All I right. Think, very I good. think she's trying to get off the ship. But anyway. Okay, so guys, <laughs> in March, um, we're back uh, with St. Andrews because their um, St. Andrews University, the, their newspaper is called The Saint and they published an article online called Ochai the New and Au Revoir, which I believe is two different languages, <laughs> poking fun at the independence debate in Scotland. And the Nats really took offence at this. Uh, there was a lot of name-calling um, and Sorry. trolling by the Nats with one, there was SNP MSP Trisha Marek, and she called the writer anti-Scottish and anti-women, <laughs> at best pathetic wee trolls. And this was reported in many newspapers and magazines. Now, Mark and I had already met the editor of the newspaper. We'd actually met him just a few weeks before at a Free Speech Union event. So we were quick to uh, basically contact him and offer our support because they were really, really getting trolled and um, the bullies were out in full force trying to smother this little bit of, you know, revolution in, in Scotland. But the main thing they were being called really was anti-Scottish. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a shocker. And what else you got for us? What else happened? Uh, that month we also started talking about, well, I mean, everybody had been talking about it for years, but um, we did a, a feature on the ferry fiasco because the Audit Scotland had just published their um, report into the, this ferry fiasco and everything like that. Um, and they were saying, as we know, that there was major problems were still unresolved. Um, it, a multitude of failings had been exposed, a lack of transparent decision-making, a lack of project oversight, no clear understanding about using public's money, um, on and on and on. And this mm. is something I know we covered in uh, many uh, shows throughout the year, and it's still going on. And you know what I would love? Yeah. I would love this year, I would love to be able to say in one of the shows, well, that's the ferries built and they're sailing. <laughs> no, it's never going to happen, Mary. No, it's no. never. Oh, no. Hell will the, freeze over. It's being launched and all those people in yep. the islands, they're all happy with yep. their ferries and they're all on time. And, and it's, you know, okay. so that's what I would like for next year. Yep. Right. Hell will freeze over before I've got a sailing ferry in Scotland. That's right. right. Moving on. Right. Um, in April, we just we had run an article about will XSNP go back to Labour? Um, and which I think I wrote an article called The Golden Bridge which said basically that we had to stop asking the parties to work together and instead focus on how Labour can get back to SNP. At the time, uh, I got a lot of pushback on that. However, the the, the world has moved in our favour, I suppose. Labour is on the rise again. And the question is, the big question that's going to be for next year, is going to be, uh, is Labour going to be able to maintain their lead Uh, in the UK, is it going to be able to maintain, to create any kind of momentum in Scotland? Um, The question really is, do voters want to follow Sturgeon off a cliff, uh, or will they prefer the safer change that Anna Sarwar and Keir Starmer are are offering? Now, some people may disagree with safer change in that case. And uh, we see these polls at the moment, maybe a little bit of stuff a lot of people saying they would want it, but they're not actually being asked the right question. The right question is, if there is no referendum, 
what would you choose? That is the actual question that should be in every poll right now because there is not going to be a mm. referendum. Um, a few other things happened in uh, in April. Uh, we were attacked by the National. National is always attacking us. And But uh, our petition to uh, uh, stop the National's anti-English hate now has 6,700 subscribers, which is probably more than they have uh, in sales. So we're going to keep on pushing them uh, over the year. Then we also discussed is Scots a language, and I'm not going to go into this detail because we don't have much time. It's a big thing that's going on even now in Twitter. Um, but the fits, but basically it seems that there's a whole bunch of people out there who want to gaslight us into say, yeah. saying that that speaking 200 Scots words and English in a Scottish language is the Scots language and that people are somehow speaking the Scots language every day. No, they are not. Well, they're, so, they're absolutely not. Well? It's a lot of nonsense. It's Go so, ahead. so annoying. I think they do not get exposed by having the, they hired an American teenager in order to write these Scots words. I mean, yes. what is actually happening, guys? I mean, me, you, Mark, we're all Scots. We, we, take, <laughs> no. we speak in different accents. They're, I mean, it's just um, accents, guys. It's not a complete different language. I mean, some people no, would call it a language, but it's, it's so... Um, like well, I mean, they are you can using just it for the someone... nationalist cause. Yeah, that's true. That's you can all use, they're you using can, it for, guys. You can say to someone, any Scots, say, okay, so tell, me, uh, tell me three or four sentences in Scots. And you're like, we can't, we can't, we could go, oh, it'll be a bra, brick, moon, lick, lick, to nick. That's it. It's, you know, uh, it's, it's I mean, that's it, or maybe some burns. That's it. That's not, that's not what we do. We're not doing that. And it's driving me, and like, I'm sure it's driving <laughs> yeah, you nuts. Round the wall. As you say, just yeah. up, absolutely crazy. Okay. Much more on Twitter. Now you're up mm. with me. Right. Okay. It's May. Okay. So I'll cast your mind back to May. It's the Scottish Council elections, guys. Mm. Uh, and we've seen, um, resulted in a hammering for the Scottish Tories. So they took an, they were hemorrhaging seats to both what it seems like Labour and the SNP and everybody else, really. Uh, so it wasn't it too surprising, uh, given the SNP's whole media campaign around uh, the, the Scottish Council election. The mantra was anti-Tory, anti-Boris, if you remember. It was keeping the Tories out, even in the Council elections, guys. I had nothing to do with it. Tories had nothing to do with it, but it's anti-Boris, anti-Tory rhetoric. Uh, <coughs> and it translated well because, um, you know, given the, the the scandal surrounding Boris at the time, it did translate well. So well, I noticed they're um, not able to do the anti-Rishi thing very much. It's not really working. Right? No, no, it's not going to fly very well. And uh, also, uh, to coincide with the Scottish Council elections, the majority ran a fantastic billboard <laughs> campaign where a simple yet effective, powerful statement, SNP councils are rubbish. If you've got a picture, right, that would be go, great. Hey everyone, we're here today in front of the majority's SNP councils are rubbish billboards. Bin the SNP. Thank you all for participating, for donating and for your support. We'll see you soon. Just another fine example of the majority doing the Lord's work, guys. <laughs> um, that was great. Thank you. Uh, such a good video. Uh, so that campaign ran um, fantastically through May. And to round off May, guys, just to sort of cap off what uh, Mark was saying about the Scots language, we've got a hilarious clip for you all to enjoy and prepare yourself for maximum cringe. Oh, it's, yes, OK. Thanks maximum to cringe the afternoon our inquiry, particularly the young folk that's experience helped to inform our recommendations. Our inquiry found that poverty is one of the four most issues causing poor health and well-being outcomes for parents <laughs> and young folk. Jeez, the evidence oh, shows the benefits of physical oh, yes. activity. It just, oh, it's just, it just goes on. It's, it's almost too good. Folk, enough. Anyway, anyway, that's enough of that. Moving on. So moving on. She, she can, oh, okay. it, it's so obviously done on a teleprompter and she's trying to read it. It's not, it's not the words she would use. It's not natural that's the thing. It's, it's not no. natural at all. Uh, it's so contrived and it's just rotten to watch, guys. It's so it's cringy. Really uh, it's it's like fake. It's like a, an American actor trying to fake being Scots. It's ridiculous, no, it's guys. That. Ridiculous. I mean, it's, like a Scots, it's a Scots person trying to fake being Scots. Being Scots. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's absolutely, absolutely not. Oh, right. you up. Well, June was a big month. Um, well, okay. So the first thing that happened was that. Um, we had more of we had a campaign for hashtag resign Ross 
because he had a little bit more backstabbing going on. Oh, no. um, we've got disloyalty, we've got flip-flopping. So just to recap, he put his no-confidence letter into the 1922 committee to get Boris out after the Partygate scandal. Mm. Then he invoked the conflict in Ukraine as a, an excuse to why he flipped back to wanting Boris out and to backing Boris and withdrew the letter and then not even a few weeks later, he's back to wanting Boris out and the letter's Come back on. in. Come on. Letter's out, the letter's just in. Just so hopeless. Yeah. Yeah, just so hopeless. One foot in, one foot out. Yeah, it's just never, a hokey-cokey there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> never, even, never even started the process. Yeah, yeah. so the, I mean, that's what the Scottish Conservatives were up to. Meanwhile, uh, back at the SNP, uh, Nicola Sturgeon was announcing her bid for a second referendum her new campaign, and she said, told us all that there was going to be another referendum in October 2023 for Scotland to separate from the rest of the Well, how's I wonder how that plan's going? <laughs> 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 yeah, so. Well, and then, well, we'll talk about more about that later, but, you know, she raised the, the subject, which was the de facto referendum. So, yeah. anyway, um, we'd been kind of told that that was going to happen, and actually IndyCar had said that there could, uh, they might actually declare UDI, um, but they didn't do that. That was the guy who was sitting in his car and he said he did a car. direct line yeah. to yes, yes. Uh, Mike. Mike uh, who's Mike? What's Mike? Uh, what's his name? Oh, it was Mike. a driving instructor, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And he had yeah. this you know, jump, jumper on and he's like, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to do UDI and we're going to get uh, international support and we're going to ban all the English parties in Scotland. You're like, all right, yeah. okay, you give it a go then. Mm. Hey, all right, fine. Okay, so we are at the halfway point. We're running a little bit late on it, but, but you know, it's fine. We'll be good. Um, so we'll have a wee break. Um, and no, what we'll do, yeah, we'll have a wee break and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at some of your comments. Mm -hmm. it's okay. Mary says no comments there. So <laughs> well, comments are coming in all yeah, the way through, and I'm I'm trying to post them as as we go. Well, how's so, Mary? How was, was your year this year? Then what about that? How did you, you get on? Well, personally, yeah, I had a good year. We had to move home. That was a bit. Oh, um, well, I'll talk more about that later. You know, we started the year trying to get out of the pandemic, and we're ending the year with the cost of living crisis. So a lot of stuff to deal with. Let's say that, and a lot right. of stuff to talk about. Right, mm -hmm. now I'll ask you in a wee while so you can do well, your answer. Alan Jack is actually saying, if you overrun, keep going. So, right, you know well, what? We will, Alan. But that's what we'll do. <laughs> yeah. We will. Okay, anyway, on, on to July. And we had uh, Boris was kicked out. Oh, my God. Terrible. Yeah. And uh, there was uh, toys and disarray. There was going to be a Conservative leadership contest. Who could beat the Nats best? Of course, uh, one of the favourites of favourites of most of the Scot Scottish people who are interested in this were was Penny Mordaunt because she likes to give the Nats a uh, kicking every time she's on. The, oh, she's uh, really good at it. I have yeah, to say, yeah, she's she's, she's, she's like a bullet. She just a PhD you know. in uh, taking sturgeon down. Yeah, she would be great. And of course, we would love to see that. Well, we would love to see that every week. Unfortunately, she was out uh, there. Oh, God, I missed something. Um, okay, so, um, and then there was Liz Truss, and she famously said yeah. that she was going to ignore uh, Nicola Sturgeon. Here we go, I've got it here. I feel like I'm a child of the union, that I really believe we are a family and we're better together. And I think the best thing to do with Nicola Sturgeon is ignore her. I think she's... I think... The whole, the whole room burst into it, you know. <laughs> Stand an ovation uh, for us. Uh, yeah, yeah, we should just ignore her. She's, she's got a Stand democratically ovation. elected position yeah, just yeah. as you would. I'm sorry, she's an attention seeker, Sam. That's yes, what yes. she is. Oh, we love um, watching that, don't oh, we? Just, just keep... Yeah, we... Oh, yes, it was quite Just keep bringing there. that up all the time. Yeah. Yeah, so... But, Thank so, you for that, Liz. And then, um, I mean, it was it was the it was something that needed to be said. It was the first, perhaps, I mean, perhaps the first time someone had stood up and said, "No, we're not going to, we're not going to take it anymore." Like yep. this, the song goes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, I think the, the cheers went around Scotland for that. So yeah, and as uh, Alan says, trust got at least trust at least got that right as well. Mm -hmm. And then was Rishi Sunak, who was the weakest of the candidates regarding mm. Scotland. So we'll have a very brief chat yes. about how we think that's going so far, Niall. 
Right, so I'm moving swiftly on to No, no, you're obvious. not. No, no. We're still talking about the... What do you think of Sunak? Sunak, how's Oh, so Sunak, oh, he's just somehow happened upon us. Uh, I mean, Sunak is the uh, weakest water candidate uh, who is clearly just... Um, uh, he, he seemed like the, the business um, sort of globalist candidate that everyone wanted in the background but nobody actually wanted to vote for. And he's just <laughs> somehow managed to be in the position anyway. Didn't even get voted in. Just somehow happens to be the Prime Minister. So I, I don't like Sunak at all. Uh, I think he's been almost positioned. I mean, next week we could have another Prime Minister. We don't know what's happening. Mm. Uh, well, I think one thing I was think definitely really they wanted stability. And yeah. there is certainly a bit more stability. And as I mentioned earlier, more difficult to um, attack. Exactly. Uh, also, we had um, Dorothy Bain going to the Supreme Court uh, in July, it says here, she went to plead the Scot Scottish government's case for a second referendum. And the highlight was her saying it was just so it was just unfair. so unfair. And we mm. have uh, we have a clip of that here. Here it comes. All right, here's this, this is Dorothy Bain saying it's just so What unfair. people in this world? Ah oh, yes, they take advantage because they're big and I'm little. But it's an injustice it is. Yes, oh. that was a <laughs> <laughs> that was that's that. what it sounded like. Oh my god! I yeah, know it was, it was a bit too bit, loud. It was Mark. a bit loud there. Um, yeah. We love Calamero. So it was an ancient Scottish proverb: "It's better to keep your mouth shut and be thought a fool than go to the Supreme Court and confirm it." Now yes. you're up. Yeah. So I'm moving swiftly on to August, and this time I'm moving swiftly on. So August, uh, we've seen the trust campaign en route to Downing Street. Uh, Downing Street. Sorry. Crapping all over Sturgeon on the way there, which was brilliant. Uh, we just had the clip of her saying um, uh, the best thing to do was ignore her. Uh, we said, uh, she also said the no referendum ever, unequivocally, oh, yes, that was uh, destroying uh, Sturgeon's uh, plans. Um, and we also, the month of August brought us a wee bit of a dark turn in Scottish politics. I don't know if you remember back, but um, we... August was a marked rise in the division in Scotland. And of course, I'm um, referring to the James Cook video with the BBC when he was getting abused by these hardcore Nats uh, outside uh, a protest somewhere. And to be fair to James Cook, he did handle it very well. So I forget. Yeah. You don't want it to. I've come here to do this. We've filmed it. We've put it on the television already. It's already been on the 6 o'clock news. We're here again. I've actually had my phone out. We've seen the Taliban in the phone. If you let me finish the sentence. I had my phone out actually to get a good shot of everybody and show what everyone was saying when, when the gentleman called me scum. So, who's the person question? who's been unreasonable here? You, 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 just a normal person getting called scum in the middle of the street. You know, it's just a pretty standard. Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. she asked him to call traitor. Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Sure, yeah. So you're part of the BBC, yes? Yes, that's right. right. Do you know about the claim of right 60 days? Yeah. Right, anyway, forget oh, it. I know, that's enough. Oh, that's enough. Oh, my God. That's a whole other <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so excuse if it was a little bit loud. I don't know why that one came on so loud. Yeah, the videos seem quite loud, I think. No, those, those two are quite loud, I guess. Okay, mm -hmm. anyway, moving on. Yes, moving on to September. Mary, I think that's you. Yeah. Oh, no, right. it's not. I've still got, I've still got no. something. Uh, so uh, we had the STV going full nat. Uh, so we had Colin, uh, is it Mackay? Is that his name? Yes. Um, uh, so it just, the SNP basically just uh, lifted their mask uh, and revealed that they're like the SNP TV, basically. Um, yeah. and, and they went full nat with Colin Mackay. I think he actually supported the uh, the notion for the, the general election becoming a de facto referendum. It's yes, just, that's it's right. just yes, scene, it's absolute right. scenes. Um, knowing full well it's wrong. And uh, we can't leave August without touching upon the fringe. Uh, I hope, uh, let me know if you ever if you uh, visited it this year. Uh, and what a crappy fringe it was, I thought. It was really quite bad. And we had, uh, just to sort of cap it off, we had Jet Setter and Los Angeles regular uh, Brian Cox fly in for a one-to-one -one with Sturgeon. I mean, give us a break already, guys. And it should happen now. And it shouldn't be about personalities. It should be about country first, not politics, country first. And democracy. And democracy. Oh. 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 Yeah. <laughs> and do you think there's something about... 
You know, just yeah. that. Oh, 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 oh. just um, oh. pass the sick bucket. <laughs> very bad. Very bad. Very I mean, how many times did she appear in the French Five fringe shows or book festivals and so on? It's like do your job. We're not in, we didn't didn't get hired to go gallivant around book festivals. What you did get hired what to do was to empty the bins, right? And to provide, provide services. Services are a disaster. But you're mm-hmm. still going to books book shows and hobnobbing with Brian Cox and all the other people like that. It's just like oh, yeah. God, you know. Yeah. Just, you know, not, I think that definitely lost her quite a few points. Anyway, Mary, you're up. Okay, so we're now we're moving on quickly to September. In September, um, Truss, uh, Liz Truss was elected Prime Minister, um, and we were all very hopeful, I think. Uh, but unfortunately, the knives were out for her from the, <clears throat> I guess, Rishi Sunak supporters. Is that who you think it was, guys? Mm. Well, so, so certainly it was. Uh, it's it didn't last very long anyway. No. So, despite the fact that she was voted in by the Conservative uh, voters themselves over Rishi Sunak, she only lasted six weeks before they forced her out. Um, and then very soon after that, she no sooner had met. Her Majesty the Queen, then unfortunately and sadly, the Queen passed away. I think it was the same weekend she actually met the Queen yeah, and she died. Right. It was, it was horrible. Like two, two days later or something, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. It was, uh, and the Queen had looked quite healthy, I thought. I yeah. mean, not healthy, but she, she'd looked quite good when she was meeting Liz Truss. Anyway, so the month had started with, you know, we're quite hopeful that we we're going to kind of move on and then all, the, all these things happened. So the Queen passed away on September the 8th. And there was a great outpouring of grief all, all across Scotland. Mm-hmm. And many, many thousands of people had lined the routes uh, for the funeral the funeral route um, from Balmoral to mm-hmm. Edinburgh, um, paying, the res- paying the respects. See that there. Did any of you manage to get across and see her? No. We no. Oh. no, we didn't go. Did Why you go, we? Niall? No, of course I went. The- of course, of course. Uh, well, I mean, it's one of these things that you didn't want to miss. It was one of these historic yeah. moments. Where I thought, um, and 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 at the time, I hadn't I hadn't seen um, the people of Scotland take to the streets for almost any reason at all. Uh, mm-hmm. And it was interesting that the thing that got people to stop uh, and and take uh, sort of scope of things was the Queen dying in Scotland. And I thought that was really quite poignant and interesting that you know Scotland sort of rallied around the Queen's death. I thought it was really um, really great. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of nationalists were um, surprised that so many people had turned out to show their respect. Um, but we were kind of surprised to see the National, <laughs> that SNP rag. They were the only newspaper that we saw in Britain that had mm. negative uh, headlines at that time. I think they really misjudged the mood of the country. Yeah. Yeah, we took them to task on it um, as well. Mm. Um, basically, and and we pointed out uh, quite a bit of uh, what's it called uh, hypocrisy by uh, the newspapers editors who were saying, "Oh, we're real monarchists. We love the monarchy and all no, this type of stuff." Not uh, not newspaper. The, the company's news quest uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, CEO and its chief editor saying, "We love the monarchy. We love the monarchy." Yeah. Well, what are you print, printing over here then? Yeah, right? I think, I think uh, NewsQuest is uh, satisfied with their, their openly hypocritical stance on things. I think they're, 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 they're totally fine with that. <laughs> that um, is very true, definitely. So anyways, but nonetheless, it still has to be pointed out. And we actually got an article uh, in Private Eye about it. We were able to uh, elevate it up to that level. So that was mm-hmm. a good a good result. Yeah. So by the end of the month, we had uh, or the prime minister that had just come in was going out and we had a new king, King Charles III, of course, um, and Nicola Sturgeon, we saw her attending the funeral event, and she's, uh, you know, she seemed to be getting around as much as she had at the Queen's Jubilee just a few months earlier. Well, yes, I mean, she was that was hideous hat she was wearing as well. No, not I mean, just she, but she's quite happy to participate in all the jolly events, isn't she? You know, of go course. to the go to the Jubilee and have you know front row seats wave your flag and whatever it is. But she wants to be seen. Yes, of course, that's but make take a selfie and what have you. Yep. Right, on to October. I uh, hope it was big news because Sturgeon said she detests the Tories. Go. Who would you rather have as Prime Minister? Well, that's not a difficult question. I mean, if the question to me is would I prefer a Labour government over a Tory government, I, I detest the Tories and everything they stand for. So it's not difficult to answer that question. Uh, so so yes, you want to see Chris Starmer you know, in? 
Yeah, I mean, this is part, as far as, I think it was a bit of a trap, actually. She's trying to position herself as being the real anti-Tory voice of Scotland um, and trying to get into a a pissing contest, as it were, with Anna Sarwar and Keir Starmer to say, no, we are more, we hate the Tories more. Thankfully, the Labour are smart enough not to do that at the moment. I think they've actually got pretty decent leadership strategically uh, um, in Scotland at the moment. So they weren't, they didn't enter into that. And so... Um, it was able to be just pigeonholed on to Sturgeon. And I think a lot of people just said, this is a real coarsening of discourse uh, and compared it with other stuff that she had said before. Um, We also did another campaign, uh, which was uh, for billboards, uh, which was a Stop Wasting Our Time and Money campaign. Uh, Let me see if I've got that one here. What a great campaign for that uh, name that is, Mark. Uh, Another... (laughs) Common sense, powerful statement. That's all we need. Well, oh, thank you very sense, much. Buddy. Niall, that's, that's great. Glad you're We're back in the show. In Glasgow and the majority's <laughs> billboard campaign. Not make it bigger. Thank you to yeah, all the donors who made this possible. Stop wasting our time and money, Nicola. Bring your Excellent. Uh, focus on a health education. More of the Lord's work, ladies and gentlemen. Keep issues you can that people actually contribute care to this about. sort of thing. If you'd like to keep donating and putting more billboards up, please go to our website and donate now. Well, there you go, of course. That's it. Go. So we all like, uh, um, if you do want those type of things, please do so. And, okay, I've got another video, quite a lot of videos in this, week, this, this month. Um, where is that? I was on Talk TV and mm. I was uh, made an interesting comparison with... Uh, Nicola Sturgeon's plans. I'll try and get skip to the part. Joining me now is Mark Devlin. He's founder of The Majority, which is a voice for Scotland's anti-nationalist uh, uh, majority. Well, Good morning go. to you. Hi, David. How are you today? I should, very well, thank you very much. I imagine your eyes rolled when Nicola Sturgeon popped up again. Oh, it's not just eye rolling. It's much more than that. I mean, it's just uh, <laughs> ongoing, what we call the never end. It's just constant talk about an uh, independence referendum that isn't going to happen that is just taking up the whole media space in Scotland and no one can talk about anything else. I'm the same, it's Catherine. It's really the same. from the actual real problems that we have here, many of them, in fact, most of them caused by Nicola Sturgeon's government itself. I mean, in, in many ways, you are right. Uh, she seems to forget that she is first minister of a country that faces very serious problems. Uh, <laughs> certainly the cost of living. We know the drug problem in Scotland. We know about the poverty in Scotland. And I don't see her addressing any of these these massive issues she just talks about independence yeah yeah it's just a big as i said it's a big distraction i mean she wants to try and present her plan as being some kind of lifeboat uh, that scots can get into to escape from uh, uk economic crisis but in fact all she's really offering is like a wheelie bin that's out in the middle of the ocean that's on fire and surrounded by sharks normally <laughs> just are not really not really for this and an oil spot okay. yeah. it's very yeah. evocative yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. That was, image, yes, that was the wheelie bin, and um, <laughs> uh, the I'll just say I have to say doing that kind of live TV is extremely stressful, but it was but it was good. Okay, now you're up for November. Yes, November. So November brought us. Uh, I see a lot of people in the comments calling the WEF candidate. Uh, I tend to agree with that. The Tory Prime Minister, another one uh, with trust only actually lasting 45 days in office, going down as the history, uh, or in history as the shortest seven prime minister. So Sunak replaced him in November. And um, what else happened in November? We had the Supreme Court giving us closure, guys. Giving us closure. Some closure, um, certainly. Or so yes. it would seem. Yes, okay, I've got this. I don't know how long this, what this one, I think it's fairly... The court unanimously concludes that the, that the proposed bill does relate to reserved matters. Accordingly, in the absence of any modification of the definition of reserved matters by an order in council under section 30 of the Scotland Act or otherwise, the Scottish Parliament does not have the power to legislate for a Uh, referendum on Scottish independence. Yes. Full stop after that. that. (laughs) <laughs> uh, so this is this is the closure we were all waiting for, guys. Mm. So this is this is was rumbling on for months and months. We'll wait till the Supreme Court. They say we'll wait until the Supreme Court. They say, well, the Supreme Court came. They said no, and yet we're now we're back to the maniac plan to turn a general election into an indirect, guys. It's, 
is there no way of stopping this lunatic? Is there no way? <laughs> uh, I mean, Scotland isn't it a call? Well, that's the thing we, with we, the Nationals. They'll never give, they'll never give, they'll up, never give up until you completely close off every single avenue. Even a, 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 the Supreme Court, they're not, no, we'll do a de facto referendum. If the, if, if, if the de facto referendum plan went, you know, couldn't be done, they'd try something else. They have to just keep the supporters going with any hope, any hope. That's what, that's it. And at a certain point, they're going to turn around and go, you've just led us up the garden path. That's it, and we move on. And that's yeah, hopefully absolutely. what will happen in the next few years. I mean, it's years. shameless on so many fronts. It's unbelievable. I mean, this dodgy de facto referendum cannot work, will not work, doesn't it work? <laughs> Isn't it going to work? Isn't it going to happen even? <laughs> Uh, so I think you've got a video from a, a, a oh, courageous yeah, so donor from yeah, and this is a donor. Yeah, because and this is a to come out and celebrate what's happened today. I think it's great. I think it's shown why we've got laws in this country, and I think all of Scotland is not the SNP. So I think to you're, you're right. Yeah, they've got to say they've never got any answers for AMD. I wish they would just get on with the day job, get the economy sorted. They've got devolved powers. She so speaks for Scotland. Well. So it's so such a job. How on earth are they going to do any better under? <laughs> Yeah. So great evening, Ash. Um, well done, Donna. And if you're watching this, I salute you. Yeah, well, she did a great, she well, did a great Donna's job. Donna's on the show. She was on the show, but we had, we, had, we had some technical issues, hoping to maybe talk with her again. Um, that was very good, Mary. You've got to wrap up the year with. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. It's I've got December. a tiny bit on November. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry Niall, I'll go ahead. Sorry, um, um, it's a jam-packed show tonight. We're trying to get in on the, on top of everything. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, this is the uh, month where we've seen a huge amount of pressure applied to Hamza Youssef in the media. Um, so th- this is where Sturgeon could have won over public favourability and actually sacked Hamza Yous- Youssef. But in fact, she's not done that, guys. She's just kept him in post, um, where clearly he's a ticking time bomb, guys. He's a ticking time bomb. <laughs> Hopeless, completely hopeless, really. I mean, he's just, he's terrible. Useless as um, well. Yeah, I'd love to hear what the Electoral Commission thinks of a de facto riff as well. Although I do think that there's no, there's no issue against a party running on a single issue, um, of course. But as uh, we talked about earlier, a few weeks ago, if they are going to do that, they must only talk about that. And they must be held to only talk about that. So if Nicholas Sturgeon says, we can fix the cost of living crisis, ah, no, 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 no. No, we're not going to talk about that. You're just going to talk about independence, right? Mm. And so they have to have to hold her if that's the plan. They have to hold us that. And I mean, and then Labour, Labour, and so on. Uh, Tories can say, well, we 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 want, we want to fix cost of living crisis right now, not in three years or whenever it is or, mm. or later. Mary, you're up for the final month of the year. This month we are in right now. Well, exactly. This um, We're in December now, and what's happening in December? <coughs> well, we've got we seem to have some kind of revolt going on down at Westminster the with revolting. the SNP MPs, the revolting <laughs> SNP MPs. <laughs> uh, seen a number of things going on. Flynn has booted out Blackford, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. Um, yes. He seems to be kind of taking over, and others are out, including Pete Wishart and Chris Law. Mm-hmm. So, and there's a wee bit of a revolt going on in Scotland too. We saw a few weeks ago that the some of the, the Scottish MSPs have voted against Nicola and the party with the Gender Reform mm-hmm. Act. <coughs> so we need yes, to definitely we'll keep cracks, our, cracks are showing. In, eyes and ears open and see what's going on there. But it does look as if things are starting to fall apart just a yeah. wee bit. Uh, so you can so imagine can that these uh, Westminster MPs are like. You know, well, we don't need the Greens. We don't need the, we don't need the gender reform. We don't need all the all the climate stuff. We don't need any of that because she's only trying to get that get the Greens on board, right? So we don't, why do they, why do they want that? And then she put putting their jobs in the line, you know, with this de facto referendum. It's nuts. I mean, if I look down there, you would like, well, eat it. anyway. Okay, that was so. That was the year that was. And uh, what a year it has been so far. We hope it was very good for you. Things you can yeah. do for to support the show. You can make a monthly donation. You can buy a mug. There, yeah, oops, rest of it. 
There you go. And these are going good. We've sold quite a lot of these the past uh, few and days. And don't forget to get your coupon. I've put it oh, there. Yeah, coupon, show yes. 10 to get the right. 10% discount. Um, well, please do that. Uh, you can subscribe to the show and tell your friends about us for next year. We'll go from strength to strength. Coming up, it's the highlight of the year. Zoomer of the year. <laughs> it is highlight of it's, it's Zoomer of the year, although we've still got the same graphic as before, so oh. should have fixed of the year right so similar to the year i'm going to kick it off but i just want to uh pay homage to all the people in the comments just at the moment these are cracking me up with your funny comments uh it's been a fantastic show um and thanks for all the welcome back messages and stuff it's been brilliant uh so kicking off my zoomer of the year guys uh it's my favorite person guys Zoomer of the year, I think uh, he really deserves it, is Hamza Youssef, guys. So Zoomer of the year. And it has been a long, arduous year, but I think he takes the crown for so many reasons. He deserves <laughs> Zoomer of the year. Evil Knievelin around on a scooter uh, in the corridors <laughs> of Holyrood. Without a care in the world. I mean, the rumour is, guys, right? Uh -huh. uh, that you can still see the skid mark where he fell. <laughs> um, and here is the. Did you put a little plaque? The Here's the clip. It's you should be sure. Can we get that? Oh, look? On look? that never gets oh, old. Oh, we can do another one. Um, we can do another, another, another one. Another one. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you, it was a good job he didn't have to attend to A and E. He might still be there. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, last time. this clip alone, uh, um, I can put him up there, but. This, although I'm putting the laughing aside for a moment, I haven't picked Hamza useless uh, because of his comedic brilliance. Uh, alas, I've picked Hamza for his seemingly bottomless ineptitude. It really oh, is good. a bottomless pit of despair. <clears throat> uh, everywhere the man walks, there's an aura of failure that follows him around like a shadow, guys. He's destroyed the legal profession. Our legal profession was hate crime law. Mm. But not having... Uh, having, um, well, he has to outdo that, of course. So then he jumps into our NHS and he's destroying that right before our very eyes, guys. Uh, this year, we've seen the Scottish NHS reach desperation levels, stages under Yusuf. It's so horrendous. We've seen Scots literally die waiting on ambulances this year. 15 ambulance queues outside hospitals and 52-week waiting times for sometimes routine procedures. And I'll leave you with this, guys. If, if someone in the future wanted to send somebody back in time to destroy Scotland like a Terminator, <laughs> right? they would send Hamza Youssef. That's what they'd do. He deserves his P45 and he deserves Zoomer of the Year, guys. Mm. Oh, good okay. candidate, so definitely. Good Tell candidate. me in the comments. Tell very me. good candidate. Who do you agree with? Um, uh, Niles. I mean, it's, it's pretty it's strong, it's strong. But yeah, no. this is the point. Joking aside, it's a terrible situation. Well, we will move on to Mary's selection. Oh, yeah. Of the year now i'm annoyed at myself that i didn't change that uh, well which, <laughs> i put that my wee caption on so <laughs> my I, you know i i know you guys said oh we have to think long and hard and whatever i really didn't <laughs> okay. um my zoomer of the year is nicola sturgeon oh. and i know i've got a good one here um you know this year she has led us all on a merry dance well that's actually not that merry to be honest but with her supreme court pretendy ref de facto ref or whatever kind of ref shenanigans and as expected the snp have gotten absolutely nowhere mm -hmm. but we're you know we're never going to get that time or that money back yeah that's a good point so we've wasted i mean that's another year wasted and um, I think I'm just going to interject here a little mm -hmm. bit. Sorry, I think the media has got a lot to say to blame mm -hmm. for this, mm -hmm. for just indulging all this all the time instead of just saying "f off." You know, this isn't going to work, and we're not going to listen to you. They would never do that with English nationalists. They would never do that with any type of nationalists anywhere else in the world. Just continually indulging Scottish nationalism, and you know who the usual suspects are. The, the media deserve their own wee spot. Oh, actually, sure, yeah. Media, actually, yeah, I think You're that's right true. there, Mark, and pointing that out. But right. maybe, uh, well, well you know, we, we started the year, we were trying to recover from, you know, the pandemic. 
And then as we move through the year, we were hearing about this cost of living crisis, which we're now completely mired in. And has Nicola or has her party or has her movement, have they done anything to help with any of that? Well, I don't think they have. No. Um, they've been asleep at the wheel. They've got their eyes off the balls um, as we career off the road, basically. The, uh, you know, I think it was Niall that said earlier that the, the, the Scottish National Health Service is, is at a desperate point. I would say it's past a breaking point, yeah. right? Our education system is completely failing Scottish kids. Um, we've got, you know, indo indoctrination is, is rife. And it was Nicola Sturgeon herself who said that she wanted to be judged in that. Our transport's a disaster. We've well, got the ferries again, fiasco. Media, media not holding a ticket. <laughs> we've got rail strikes. I mean, we've, we've, got, we've got strikes in every sector, in fact. Yep. Anne-Marie Ward pointed out earlier that we've got the worst drug deaths in Europe. And now we've got, we're facing a winter where people can't afford to pay their gas and their electricity bills, which I blame Nicola Sturgeon for, for her stupid collaboration with the Greens and their wacko policies on energy. It's going to see all of us in poverty with these yep. ridiculous ideas about wind farms that are going to save us when all we need is a good nuclear plant. That's what I'm asking for. <laughs> right. Please, Santa, send us a good nuclear plant to get some electricity out. Well, they're, going to do, they're just going to And open up it, some coal mines as well. And as if there wasn't enough division that Nicola Sturgeon has caused, we've also, we're all fighting about, as a trans man, a woman, and yeah. because of these stupid gender reform plans. And I could go on, but we're out of time. Can I just interject on that last You certainly there? can, yeah. Um, I mean, Nicola Sturgeon knows exactly what a woman is, guys. I've said this in a speech recently. She knows exactly what a woman is, except for when the cameras show up. Then she just suddenly forgets. She's got uh, that uh, word to blindness. Uh, she doesn't know what it means. It's because she can't afford to upset anyone. But sometimes the truth upsets people, guys. You know, it's well, very you know, dangerous. We at Johnson's yeah. point that the gender bill is dangerous. It's the most dangerous thing happening to this country. They're writing <laughs> fantasy and make believe into law, guys. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it's and a real this is, it's, it's unbelievable. There's a protest on the 21st uh, outside Holyrood on the day of the uh, GRA vote. And uh, I, I encourage anyone to go and show up. Okay. Right, well, so, one thing we didn't mention, though, in this was uh, actually the uh, intervention of J.K. Rowling into the debate. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it was. Hero of the year. The yes, hero I think of the year. Uh, she's she for coming in and Common sticking sense. up yep. for what she believes in, whether you even believe that, that or not, but actually putting her reputation on the line for that is something that has to be applauded in any sense. By any, by any decent mm -hmm. people, I think. Anyway, all right, very good. We are going to go on to next Zoomer, last Zoomer. We will be a few minutes running over, but I hope you will stay with us. Stay with us, yeah. We'll be here. Uh, it was in the year, so mine could have been um, Chris McElhenney, who I think actually got the most nominations this year. I'm not too sure we didn't check, but he, regular viewers will know him as Alba Man. <laughs> there he is there. Mm. Uh, Alba Man uh, was recently flag-bothering um, Ferguson Marine, you know, saying, though, there wasn't enough... Uh, why was there a, why was there a Union Jack outside Ferguson Marine and many many other misadventures throughout the year? Um, but my nomination for a Zoom of the Year has to go to Emma Harper, who has so far uh, in a lifetime uh, of inadequacy given us um, the classics about Scottish currency, where she said our Scottish pounds have the propensity to be really really strong. Do you think she knows what propensity no, means? I don't know. It's the way she says it's something. Maybe she it was, written, it was written for her. She yeah. probably thinks it's some kind of superpower, you know, you've got propensity. And they're talking about plastic, you know, plastic translates anywhere, you know, and the Scottish yeah. Pound is, you know, get more money for that overseas, yeah. which is, it would be a, a mm. news to currency traders. Um, and she also said that a border would create jobs. Mm -hmm. And we've got another, we saw the fake Scots earlier, here's another one. A wee bit of it because we can't stand any more of it. Tough to be speaking here the day, and I'm going to focus my contribution on Scots. I want How to see legislation feel, endorsing the Scots lead, and I threep that we need an act over the Scots lead. The Scots lead 
is mighty important as per <laughs> our school Scotland's it's cultural embarrassing. hairship, <laughs> kissing and sang poems <laughs> oh, and no, no, a and in a day massive we yes and in our communities <laughs> for by every day. Oh Jesus, okay, whatever. All right, so mighty oh. me. Yeah. I lads, that lassie Zoomer of the year. Oh, anyway, that's my okay. So, uh, but now I was going to decide. Right now, come on, come on. Oh. Uh, right, okay. So this one, um, uh, I have to spend some time on this because it's Zoomer oh. of the year, right? So, Pums are used to. I'm not going to pick um, Mark's choice. Um, yeah, no. it's, but she, I think she's should... good for comedic value, Emma Harper. Yes. But it's I, not, I think, yes. it's not a, a proper uh, Zoomer of the year, and Mary. I think Nicola Sturgeon has got to take the biscuit this year. This year, uh, wow. you're right in what she said. She she takes us on this merry dance, as you described it. Uh, well, it's not very merry. Uh, no, it doesn't feel right. like a dance. It feels like a march. <laughs> uh, a, a march towards dragged. a cliff. Yeah, yeah, dragged um, to the cliff edge. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So, um, and thanks to everyone in the comments. Uh, some Brita Johnson's blood pressure is off the hook. Um, <laughs> uh, a couple oh, of people mentioned Rita, this. Rita, you need um, a wee glass of wine or something. Uh, there was a, a story recently today or yesterday about £100,000 being loaned from Murrell to the SNP. A lot of people mentioned it in the comments. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's yeah. on our radar, but we'll do some more investigating on that before we start firing it about the place. But it is very strange, and thanks for bringing it up. Um, what do you guys think? Is Nicola Sturgeon a deserved Zoom of the yeah, Year? I oh, think I think she's definitely. I definitely think I, I don't think anyone could disagree with that. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think that she is. She is. I think it's yeah right. I think this it's this dance of you know like a death spiral mm. that she's leading her supporters on, and to mm. Scotland, while well, we we all have to participate in it to some extent. It's like uh, we've been dra- dragged into this whirlpool here, and um, and it just ends nowhere, and it's, it'll fizzle out. And then, you know what? In pe- a few years, people say, well, I never voted SNP. I would never vote for Nicola Sturgeon. You know, it'll be like that. And you're like, geez, you were supporting it at the time. That's, you know, that's not right. Anyway. <laughs> Honourable mention to Air Miles Angus and his expensive failed census. Yeah, so Absolutely. We there are many candidates. We will know yeah. next year there'll be many more uh, Zoomers of the week. And there'll be another Zoomer of the Year, of course, next year. We hope you'll still be with us then. Right. But, oh, in fact, you will be because it's just a few weeks ago away. Um, we'll be back with another show next year on, we think it'll be January 11th. Um, but we'll see when it comes to it. So, of course, we would wish you, like to wish you a Merry Christmas yeah. and a Happy New Year. Yeah, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and everyone. Happy New Year, everyone. Yep. Yeah. Happy New Year when it comes. Uh, you can still, you still got time to get a resigned Sturgeon mug before Christmas, guys. <laughs> get it, get it ordered. Uh, Merry Christmas for me and Happy New Year. And thank you to UK Union Voice and United Against Separation and the other pages that support us. Right, okay. And if you can, please uh, donate. Uh, put some music on there. So Christmas says Christmas. Christmas very music. nice. Yes, thank you. <laughs> if you can please, if you can please donate five or, or ten pounds to for us for next year, so we can do more of this and more stuff for you. Thank you, everyone, for your comments tonight. I'm still trying to get them up. Everyone saying thank you and Merry Christmas, and we're saying the same back to yes, you. Yes, thank so. you all for your comments. I'm having a look at them. normally. I don't get a chance to look at them uh, before the end of the show because I'm too busy trying to do the thing together. I'm going to leave you with the thought of the year. The thing is, we have the momentum. You know, we expect more screaming and shouting next year but everyone in the know knows it's over that doesn't mean we're going to be complacent or stop fighting if we didn't do that they would roll over us with a tsunami of bullshit but yes. so we continue our fight with you next year and beyond thank you for being with us through the year it's been it's been our pleasure thank you thank you good night merry christmas night, everyone good night to find a bit though yeah <laughs> Let's